Hi everyone, it's Jared Rogers here. Welcome back to our channel. Today I'm with my business partner Craig Byron, who's joining me from his home office. Our topic today is a job keeper payment. So this scheme's gone from being an announcement to becoming law in record time, and the ATO have just released the practical steps for business owners to apply. So Craig's been following this closely online in training sessions, and today I'll be giving us a detailed run through of the rules, and more importantly, what business owners need to do about it. So firstly, Greg, what is the JobKeeper payment about and what are the basics of how it works? Okay, so basically it's a wage subsidy, which is going to be paid to employers who choose to keep staff on the books during this um, coronavirus pandemic. Uh, there is a section in the law for non-employers, but um, we'll get to that later on. The business must have, to qualify, the business must have experienced a decline in turnover. Employers must receive, employees must receive, will receive a minimum of $1,500 per fortnight per employee. The eligible employment period starts on 30th of March, 2020. It will be paid in arrears to the employer at the beginning of the following month. So the first payment will be due on the 1st of May. It will be paid for each employee who was paid 15, who was paid $1,500 per fortnight during the month of April. If an employer does not normally pay, does not pay a minimum $1,500 per fortnight during April, they will not be eligible for a job JobKeeper payment in relation to that employee in May. Yep, perfect. Um, so if you're paying someone 500 bucks, 1,000 bucks, there's, it's not like you get a partial JobKeeper payment, it's nothing at all. So one of the mm -hmm. important things there is people are getting payments in May, but the scheme starts on the 30th of March. So I've got a bit of a diagram here to illustrate that on the screen. You pay people in April, you get reimbursed in May. What if you're in um, a situation where you can't afford to pay in April and you start paying in May, will you still get the May payment? Uh, basically, no. So just to highlight, it is actually a reimbursement of salary and wages you are expected to be paying your employees during the month of April. And then once the month has ended, that's when the ATO will check your eligibility, your employer, your employee's eligibility and forward, you know, and then reimburse you $1,500 per fortnight per eligible employee. Yep, perfect. And what if for businesses that can't, deal with that lag between the government paying them and the and paying the employees, what um, would you recommend if you don't think you can afford to pay the staff in April? Uh, so in that case, you need to um, look at getting some extra funding for your business, either contact your bank and ask for additional overdraft, um, or you know, if possible, look at having um, owners of the business contribute some extra funding in order to help cover the wage payments. Perfect. And how's the ATO going to work out who's been paying employers? Yep. Okay, so the ATO uh, have decided to use their newish single touch payroll system here and you'll need to be registered and using that system in order to be eligible. Yep, perfect. So if you're using single touch payroll already, which everyone should be, and if you're not, this is a bit of a wake up call, but everyone should be, what is, is that all you need to do? Uh, no, so you'll need to register your interest and apply in order to be eligible. Yep, perfect. All right. Um, and it's, we'll talk about how that's done at the end. Um, I think you've, you found the website where you apply, but we'll get to that. Um, right, so let's go through business eligibility. Who's eligible for this payment? Okay, for most of our businesses, um, we're looking at a, a turnover of one billion or less, and the business needs to have suffered a 30% fall in turnover, yep. um, based on the same period of the previous year. Yep, perfect. So I'll put that on the screen there. So you compare March to March, April to April. What if you started in July last year, for example, this is your first year of trading, you've got no March 2019 to compare to. Um, what's the process? Can you still claim it? 
yes, yeah, so you can still claim. There are some other turnover methods that are available. Um, the ATO also has um, discretion to consider additional information that the business may be able to provide to establish that they're adversely affected by coronavirus. Yeah, perfect. So there's no, no sort of strict way they're going to check that, but they might, for example, say, let's compare January and February to March and April, and if it's clearly a drop, then that's going to be the proof. What about, that's um, employer eligibility. What about employee or worker eligibility? I've got a bit of a table here. If you want to run through some of the main dot points for employees. Yep. Yeah, so there's three categories of uh, employment types for an, an eligible employee. You either need to be uh, full-time, a part-time, or a long-term long -term casual. Uh, a long-term casual is basically someone who has been a uh, registered employee with the business for at least 12 months. Yep, perfect. Each employee must be at least 16 years of age. Uh, they must be currently employed as of 1st of March or if they were stood down or you know, after 1st of March, then you have you know, considered and decided to actually take them back on post that date. In terms of residency, uh, slight change here to the uh, initial stimulus packages. Uh, Australian citizens will be eligible along with permanent residents and also um, the SCV special category triple four visa holders who are your New Zealand temporary resident citizens. Yep, perfect. So basically Kiwis were included in the mix after initially being left out. And then we've talked about the 1500 bucks a fortnight. So just quickly, who's, who's not eligible? Okay. So, Employer, employees that are not eligible for JobKeeper, who are ones who are receiving any government um, parental leave or dad or partner pay in the previous fortnight, uh, or any workers' compensation um, in relation to being incapable of work. So, you know, if you're making a work, if you're currently under a work cover claim or insurance claim, um, if you were not, if you're in you were first employed after 1st of March, or you left your employer before the 1st of March, or if you have been or have agreed to be nominated by another employer. So important to note there that there can't be a double up. You can't claim JobKeeper from two separate employers. Uh, you just, you claim through basically the first employer that you agree and who registers you. Yeah, uh, if there's a second one that does, then you need to um, not agree to that second registration. Cool, and then we talked about casuals that aren't long-term or in, not, not long-term or out, so that, that's pretty basic. Um, so a couple of other questions. Do workers need to work to get the payment? I wasn't sure about this one, but you've got an answer for that. Yeah, no, you don't actually have to work to get the payment. Um, but if you were working a number of hours beforehand and your employer has alternate duties for you to do, then they can require you to still do those and you can, you'll still get your $1,500 per fortnight. Um, and if you continue to work your normal number of hours, then you are also expected to be paid your normal salary. So even if that is more than 1500 per fortnight. Um, so there's no way that your employer can get you to come in and do the same number of hours and reduce the amount that they pay you under this system. Um, yeah, that's a good point. There's going to be a gap there for, for employers, for a lot of people who are earning more than that amount. So hopefully you can mm -hmm. find enough work to, to justify that extra cost as a minimum. Um, and then tax wise, what's the payment? What's the, what's the treatment for tax and GST? Yep. So it, it is a taxable payment, um, so there'll be withholding you know, to be taken out of the $1,500 before you forward on the amounts to your employees. Um, the whole $1,500 is going to be tax deductible to the employer as well. So you'll get a full tax deduction for the amount that um, that the employee receives. Yep, perfect. And you're going to pay, do you have to pay GST on that? 
yeah, so there's no no GST is applicable on any amounts that you receive through the job JobKeeper system. Perfect, cool. So that's the basics for an employer. So what about non-employers? So if your business runs as a partnership, um, trust, sole trader, that's been a lot of talk about sole traders missing out on the early stimulus package. How does it work for them in the in the JobKeeper? Yep. yep, okay. So JobKeeper has been extended to sole traders, um, you know, one partner in a partnership, and also certain you know, owners who receive trust distributions uh, and you know, or directors fees from from companies. Uh, so there is a provision in the legislation that it, that extends JobKeeper payments for these types of people in this situation. Yeah. Cool. Uh, rather than applying as an employer, you can apply um, as a business participant. Perfect. We probably won't go into trust very much because it gets a bit complex. If you do have a trust, we will talk to you individually about how that's going to work mm -hmm. if you're affected. But um, let's go through the basics for what, what they call, as you said, a business participant. Um, what, are the, what do you need to do to be eligible? Okay. So first, you must notify the ATO of your election to participate in the JobKeeper scheme and the details of the nominated individual. Only only one, as I said before, only one individual per participating business is eligible. So you know, in a partnership, if you happen to be in a partnership that's got two, three or four partners, uh, then only one partner will be eligible. Yep. And the ABM one's interesting. You have to have had your ABM on, on the 12th of March to be eligible. So looking at people who are suddenly setting up a company or setting up some sort of entity, um, after the fact to try and get some stimulus, they're, they're well ahead of the curve on that. There's, there's no um, there's no mucking around with that. There's a few exceptions. I yeah. think they're pretty much pretty strict. Yep. Mm -hmm. All right. Yep. And the next, moving on to the next slide. Yeah. So individuals need to be actively engaged in the business um, during the fortnight. So that really means that you need to be, you know, doing some ongoing work or you know, participating in the activities of the business yep. rather than just receiving a, a passive return. Yep. And then age and residency we talked about, there's no difference here for business owners versus not. Um, and then you're not a permanent employee of another employer. That was similar again to the employer situation. You can't double dip and it can't be your side job. Um, was the probably an important thing. So it's, people have an ABN and, and a side business might do a bit of consulting or a bit of, you know, manufacturing some craft things or whatever, but they work full time primarily, there's that's not going to get you any job keeper if you've got if you're working for somebody else. Um, and then turnover looks pretty similar as well, I think, to the employees. Yeah, that's correct. So turnover under one billion and a reduction of turnover on a previous period of at least thirty percent. Yep, perfect. Um, one of the other ones we've got a lot of questions of is job keeper and job seeker. They obviously sound very similar. And um, when job keeper was first announced, there was a bit of confusion. But what's the what are the basics about the two payments? Yep. So the, the first, the, the real key thing to note is that you won't be able to claim both of them. Um, you're either a job seeker or a job keeper. Um, job keeper is a little bit more per fortnight, and you need to remember that the JobKeeper period start on the 30th of March. So if you want, or if you, um, you know, if you do apply for the JobKeeper payment, then just be aware that you need to make sure that you're not receiving any job seeker payment post that date. Because um, if you don't ensure that that's the case and, and do end up receiving an amount for, uh, an amount of both for a short period of time, then you'll end up with a Centrelink debt. They've got that one month problem again here, don't we? Because the, the job keeper starts on the 1st of May. Um, people can't claim job seeker from the 30th of March onwards. So they've got to find a way of covering their own expenses between 30 March and 1 May. Because um, they do, people were initially saying, oh, I might, I might just do job seeker for a month for April and then in job, I'll change the job keeper in May. Well, you can't really do that because your May payment is for April, as we've talked about. Just be careful on that one if you have applied for Job Seeker. Um, cool, got a little table there of timing. Um, there's a bit of a mismatch. Some, some there's three paydays in in some months if you're fortnightly. So the ATO have chosen what those paydays are. So regardless of your business's payday, I think there's one there in September. They're going to count three fortnights. Um, 
for August, July, August will be paid in September. So that's, um, yeah, that, that's how you can expect to be paid. Most months there's two pay cycles in terms of the ATOs, fortnights. Um, so I might skip through that. So next question was the JobKeeper scheme only became law last week. So the ATO isn't quite ready with the application forms and things. Um, what should businesses do first before the applications open next week? Yeah, okay, so you can register you know, your interest with the ATO at the moment now, and that will um, mean that you'll keep receiving updates and things as, as you know, everything becomes you know, more available and ready and get more information and detail. Um, and then next week, I believe it's on the 20th, uh, is where you'll actually be able to claim, you know, register for your, you know, to claim for the JobKeeper payment. Yeah, perfect. I think you you sent me through the um, the summary of the job keeper application. Oh, this is an ATO page with the little um, process. So I might just switch to your screen and you just talk us through basically a couple of the, the key dates. One of which being next Monday, I think. But um, mm -hmm. if you look at that link up, I'll switch to your screen when you're ready to go. Okay, so there's about 16 steps there, which is probably not the most helpful thing of all time. But anyway. Yeah, it's a little bit more involved um, than probably what it needs to be, unfortunately, but it is what it is. Okay, so you can register your interest from now and have been able to do for a few days. And then as of the 20th of April, um, you'll be able to um, enrol for the JobKeeper payments. And then for this April month, you need to now ensure that you are paying your employees and it needs to be at least $1,500 per eligible employee per fortnight. Um, the ATO do understand that because of the system being so new and because of it being, being entered into so quickly, that if you're a little bit late during the month of April and don't pay right on the fortnight, that's okay. Um, but you need to have paid your employees the two fortnights and $3,000 in total for the month of April in order for you to be eligible to receive your JobKeeper payment in May, the reimbursement. And put it on single touch payroll, I'd imagine. You know, As well. That step. Yep. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Uh, you need to also notify your eligible employees that you'll be intending to claim for them. Um, and check that they and you know, on their behalf and check that they aren't claiming you know, through another employer or have nominated through another business. Yep. And then step five is going to be a pain because you've got to send stuff to the workers. It looks like. Yeah, that's right. So you need to send send in the employer nomination notice um, in, to complete and return it by the end of April. So it, it, they'll need to get it back to you if they want. You know, want to keep continue to get paid. Yep, and step six is probably important in terms of the enrolment process on Monday. Um, where do people need to do that? Yep, so that that gets done through the new business portal with your you know, new MyGov ID with your MyGov ID. Um, so you, you you must and you must do this by the end of April to claim JobKeeper payments for April. Yeah, if uh, yours or my experience is anything to go by with MyGov ID, it's a massive pain in the neck. Um, it's, it's not the same as MyGov for those who aren't familiar. It's an app you get on your phone where you put, enter in your date of birth and your driver's license and birth certificate and all that sort of stuff. And then you've got to connect up to the ATO to get it to work. Um, it can be quite painful. And then if you put your middle name in on one form but not the other, they'll completely reject it and anyway. So uh, yeah. Have fun with MyGov ID, but it's unfortunately what used to be OzKeys. Some of you might be familiar with OzKeys for logging into a business portal. Um, they don't exist as of March, so we're into the world of MyGov ID on your smartphone, whether you like it or not. Um, and so basically, you put the details in. So that's the April process, and then in May, there's a whole another process for confirmation. Yeah, so as well as registering in, in April with your MyGov ID, you're gonna you know, they're gonna confirm to make sure that your bank de you know, your business bank account details are are in there and correct as well. 
um, and estimate the number of employees you know, that you think might be eligible. Uh, then from there, um, there's another confirmation of your eligible employees uh, from which is, you know, this system's not even gonna be available until May the 4th. Um, but you will need to go in again and apply to claim your JobKeeper payment through the business portal. Um, you need to ensure that you've paid each eligible employee a minimum of 1500 per fortnight before tax. Or again, as we said before, you know, make sure that they've received at least $3,000 in the month of April. Uh, then you need to you know, identify your eligible employees in the application form by selecting each employee's details that are pre-filled in your you know, single touch pay reports. If you report payroll information through a single touch enable payroll solution, um, or if not, you need to manually enter them, uh, enter the details in the online services or the business portal if you don't use single touch payroll uh, enable solution. So if you've got two steps, one not, is setting it up and estimating who you're going to pay, and then May, that's in April, then in May, we're going to confirm who's actually paid. And then in step seven there, um, you have to provide some information about your turnover to make sure that you're, they, they want to see that there's still that 30% drop. I guess so. Um, so if you, for some reason, your business recovers, uh, you might need to see whether you're still eligible to claim it. So that's that's going to be quite complicated. But I imagine that um, sudden business recoveries, well, if that does happen to your business, then good luck to you. But um, I can't see it being too common of a situation at the minute. Yeah, it's probably going to be unlikely in a lot of industries and for a fair while. So yeah, um, yep. uh, and then and worry that, too much about that. Yeah, they've, they've targeted six months worth. But basically, it's a bunch of forms to fill out. As it says there, you can you can um, lodge that or you can get us to do that. So we'll, we'll be available to help with that. Um, and we'll have appointments available to do, um, to fill out some of those forms with you. It's going to be brand new for all of us, but we're obviously going to have more experience and an easier connection to the ATO than, than you will as a business owner. Um, so it's quite complex, 16 steps, eight in April, eight in May. Um, but it is well worth it because 1,500 per employee is a lot. And if the idea is going to be the difference, or the government's hoping it's the difference between people staying on the books and staying employed versus people being completely out of work and being on the government payroll regardless. So hopefully it's successful in that because obviously losing a job is pretty uh, hard to deal with. Um, yep, that's correct. And the real issue, I guess, for everyone at the moment is going to be to find the cash flow um, yeah. just to continue paying everyone. Um, yep. So uh, work on those steps. Make sure that you get your cash flow in, you know, in and sort it out. And make sure that you can you can pay everyone. Uh, and then get your paperwork in order as well, and, and get all your forms lodged. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, hopefully after that, once you've done everything like that, then it should should start to, you know, to tick along nicely for us. Yeah, you get the payments each month. That'll help pay for the next month. It's just this first month, I think, where there's going to be that gap of cash flow. You might need to take on some debt or find some other some, some other cash. Um, the other thing we've been saying separately to this to everybody is pay your super. There's extensions and grace periods and, and waivers for just about everything, um, but not for super. So super's due on the 28th of April for any payments between January first and March 31. So don't forget to pay that if you're an employer. And uh, any other comments or other things or issues that you want to mention before we close off, Craig? Uh, yeah, so just on the super, just make sure that you need to pay the guarantee on the person's wages, on their regular wages. Super guarantee is technically not required on the job keeper payment. Um, so, you know, if people aren't doing any work and just receiving the $1,500, then the super guarantee is, is, is nil. Um, but if people are doing their normal regular hours and their normal fortnightly wages is say $2,000, then you're required to pay the super guarantee on the entire amount. Yeah, it's a good point. And hopefully the payroll software um, providers are up to date on that and they're going to upgrade their processes to factor that in because it's also going to be quite tricky to do manually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, cool. All right, fantastic. Well, thanks for your time, Craig. We'll leave it there. And any questions, obviously, no give us a call. Um, contact Craig or I, and you can go through what, what this means specifically for your business. 
But um, other than that, hopefully you can register your interest and then everyone hopefully jump on Monday or maybe Tuesday, given what the rush there'll be on Monday, and um, get onto that business portal, get your MyGov ID set up so you can start filling out the forms and, and claiming these payments, either for you as a sole trader or for the employees if you're employing someone. Okay, thanks for your time and we'll talk to you soon.